Hey there, we are wrapping up the month of March and heading into a brand new season. A season of spring, a season of renewal, and a season of rebirth and new beginnings. I thought it might be useful to record a video that has a positive spin to it that is focused on creating the creation process, the creating as a verb of your life and to shed a little bit of sunshine in dark times. So I want to encourage you to really use this time wisely. I can't think of any time in history in my life when there's been such a well, there's never been anything like this that I've experienced where everything has come to a screeching halt. And so I'm looking at this as uh, what can I do with this time to really use this time wisely? And I'm having these dialogues, this conversation with my clients as much as I'm having it with myself. I, I can't imagine coaching clients without having use the tools on me. So this is some thoughts on what I would encourage you to, to do and, and to utilize at this time. First of all, really use this time wisely. You know, we, we don't have this external stimulation of running around town, dashing off to this meeting, white knuckling traffic, um, you know, being late for things or, or squeezing in one more meeting. And I, I am totally used to be like that. I was like hard charging, hard driving, always looking to see what else I could fit into my day. And yet at the same time, I was very much about, you know, meditating, setting intentions, looking for inner guidance, receiving and acting upon the insights and the ideas. And so this has been a really tremendous reset for me. And here's some of the things that I'm experiencing from that. First of all, my body was like seriously redlining all the time where I was always, always on, like on. And I really needed more time to recharge. So this is giving me that time. I think I'm probably sleeping more than I ever have. Yet at the same time, I don't feel lethargic. I feel actually very energized and inspired and enthusiastic about what I'm creating. So I'm also having an opportunity to really look within and say to myself and ask myself higher level questions. You know, is this really what I want to be doing with my life? Am I living my life the way I always wanted to live my life? And on some levels, the answer is yes. And then on some levels, the answer is like, hell no, it's time <laughs> to really change some things up. So it's guiding me and it's giving me the space to really go within and to fearlessly take steps that I would have put on the back burner. Well, actually I did put on the back burner before. So, you know, even as a coach, like we're not perfect and, and we're not gurus by any stretch of the imagination. We're learners. If anything, a coach is a learner where they're constantly expanding themselves, growing themselves and learning new ways of being. This is something I've been embracing wholeheartedly ever since this pandemic began. And it's enabling me to really get in touch with some goals and some objectives and some experiences in my life that I had made this limiting belief around that uh, it would come later, that I didn't have time right now and I had to do all this other stuff before and that there was some kind of linear path to success. And you know, there is a saying that your to-do list is, is the thing that will derail you from your happiness. And I'm experiencing that firsthand, even though the way I 
ran my life before was very much about not having this massive to-do list. But in the back of my mind, you know, there was this percolation of thought that was saying, no, you have to do this before you can do this, before you can do this, because that is social programming that runs really, really deep. You know, generations, hundreds of years, we have been in this ideal that this comes before that, before that, before that, and we have to go through this linear timeline in order to eke out a living and to get even you know a small semblance of our greatness on the table. So use this time wisely to really truly find your true north. My prediction is there is going to be a lot of people that when we come through this are going to say, they're going to throw in the towel on what they've been doing with their lives and say, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore. As a matter of fact, I didn't really ever want to do that or I lost my passion for doing that or, or that thing I was doing, career, job, relationship, uh, lifestyle had just has just run its course and I was holding on to it out of sheer fear and comfort zone. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say that to themselves as we go through the process because it looks like now we've got at least another 30 to 60 days of social distancing. A lot can happen in 30 to 60 days in terms of the relationship that you cultivate with yourself. So really truly take this time, use it super wisely, and dial into your true north. And really ask yourself some questions, you know, from, from a, a soul level, from a spirit inner being higher self level. You know, what is it that I'm really on this planet for besides the mortgage and the bills and the lifestyle to fit into that status quo that society has been convincing me of ever since I was a little kid watching television and seeing it, you know, laid out in front of you that that was what you were supposed to become. So... I want to say at this point that for those that are going through and experiencing the worst of times right now from a loss of family members, friends, you know, I, I popped into the store today to do some provisioning and I ran into a friend of mine from the gym and uh, he was telling me that two days ago his buddy passed and so you know, my heart really truly goes out to all of you that are having these incredible experiences of losing people because it's it's hard, you know, it's hard to, to lose someone that you love. I've experienced a lot of death in my life of loved ones. You know, when I was seven, my dad died and there was just never any closure on that. I mean back in the day people you know at least in my family they didn't talk about death it was just this thing I watched my mother internalize that whole process and she never she never allowed love into her life again she just couldn't get through the stages of grief and not long after that three years later my grandfather died and he had become her mentor he had been teaching her how to run our family farm so that we had a way of living and somewhere to, some way of, of creating food and, and a living for ourselves as a family without a man in the house, without a provider, which was very typical then. And not long after that, then, you know, my grandfather or my grandmother died. And it's just like, you know, this domino effect of all of these, uh, authoritarians in my life that were supposed to be the pillars and the anchors that kept our family together were just disappearing 
And then, you know, a few years ago, my mom died. And for those of you that have been through having a parent pass, you know how that changes you. That changes you beyond words. I can't imagine what it, it would feel like to have a child pass. It's just, it's something that I don't have any reality on. So I can't even, I can't even speak to that. Um, but I do know the hardest hit for me was when my sister died. And that was a whopper because we had had, you know, a lifetime of tumultuous relationship. And it was only the last few years that we had come back together again and that there was a healing. So going through the loss of someone that you're really close to, you know, God bless you, and my heart goes out to you, and all of those that are dealing with that right now. And it's really important that we find a way to look toward the future. I know my family members want me to do that. They want me to go create and look toward the future. We're in a time of ascending past all limitations right now. And when the limitations are the most profoundly in our face is when those limitations are actually dissolving to the greatest degree. So if you can find a way to, whenever you start to go into this fear, doubt, doom, gloom, scarcity, my whole life is falling apart kind of, um, dialogue, inner dialogue, or feeling, just remember that any time something is dissolving in your life, it's like right in your face, and it feels like it's real, and it feels like you're in the thick of it. I've, I've even heard clients say, you know, I thought I was over that, and now I'm repeating it again, and my response is, you're not repeating it. You are actually clearing it and you are going to the next level. So you are ascending your self-awareness around your consciousness, your self-awareness around how you actually tick and what your true north is and what inspires you, what you would really like to be experiencing in your life. You know, would you like to live somewhere different? Would you like to find other ways of creating revenue? Would you like to, you know, be with other people that you haven't been allowing into your existence? Really take a look at what's important to you right now and use this time to cultivate it and create it. And most importantly, to allow it. So when we talk about the law of attraction, it's really kind of old news at this point. Really what we're stepping into is allowing. Are you allowing yourself to be you? Are you allowing yourself to express you? Are you allowing yourself to go beyond your current reality, your current belief systems, your current paradigm? Many people are going to be replacing their current structures with a whole new reality. And you might be saying to yourself, well, that all sounds great, but I have no idea how I'm going to do that. And I totally get that because, of course, you don't know how you're going to do that yet. The how hasn't presented itself. And the how cannot present itself until you actually embrace it and say to yourself, I'm willing to let go. I'm willing to allow in the new. I'm willing to allow myself to look toward the future and then take your focus off of the present. You have to. It's the only way you're gonna allow yourself to feel better in such a challenging, precarious time in history. So things that we're letting go of look like the grind. This notion that you're a hero, that you're um, to be anointed for grinding it out, working nonstop, never giving yourself a break, uh, 
you know, 12, 15 hour days of just like push, push, push. That is a belief system. And when you let go of that, then you actually step into the space of allowing what it is that you're asking for, for it to be able to actualize in your experiences. And that starts with a feeling. So it's really important to get into a feeling of being. What does it feel like to be happy? What does it feel like to be inspired? What does it feel like to be appreciative? And maybe you don't know because maybe you've been caught up in the negativity. So you're gonna have to cultivate this stuff initially until you're able to find that feeling inside of you. And then you want to keep fostering it and letting it grow and letting it escalate within you until it takes over your entire being. Because it's not about what you have in order to be happy. It's about being happy. And then what you have expands based on that happiness. Something else that we're letting go of is this need for external validation. And I know that that runs rampant on um, digital media, but before digital media, it was, you know, it was still prevalent. It was, it was in the resume, it was in the biography, it's, it was in the, you know, how many boards you on and, and who do you know and what's your zip code and what's the label in your clothing and, and the make and model of your car. And, and all of these, you know, where did you have dinner and what did you spend and who did you see? And, you know, all of these things around looking for other people to tell us that we're okay, that's coming to an end. And whether that's from your boss, your company, your friends, your spouse, your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook profile, you know, it, it really doesn't matter it's changing and it's shifting and what you're being asked to do is to go within and to find that relationship with yourself and so that you're not spending your energy and your time trying to get other people to acknowledge you but you're actually going within and you're acknowledging you from a sense of communion <laughs> with your inner being the other thing that's shifting is this notion of settling. The, um, so we, we've, we've come through the industrial age, the Newtonian physics of let's look and see what the jobs that are paying the most are and then let's go get that degree so that we fit into that box and we can have that money, we can have that opportunity. That is disintegrating because what's happening now is people are actually ascending into their highest version of themselves where they're able to acknowledge their true north and with that acknowledgement of their true north to then ask themselves and how would i like to turn this into a revenue that would enable me to be free you see this is the key and for most people, having a job is not freedom. So what is it that you can do to be free? And then you attract, if you, know, if you don't wanna start your own business, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about, but if you do wanna be free and you do wanna exercise your true north and have that fulfilling experience in this lifetime, you will then align with a company that a has those values and then b looks for those values in its people and then c fosters those values because those are the values that they live therefore those are the values that they're going to foster in their people the next thing is believing in lack that there's this limited pie there's only so many slices and you have to be people out of getting a slice so there won't be enough slices for you the competitive mindset and i know this really sounds funny um but it's not it's a good example the whole 
fascination and fetish with toilet paper right now. What is it about the toilet paper shortage? I finally bought a 12 pack today. I mean, I've been, I've been looking for two weeks. <laughs> not, not as an exercise that, you know, I'm white knuckling it, but when I'm out provisioning, I'm like, well, let me just see if there's any, cause you know, if I keep a, a 12 pack ahead of the game, I'm in good shape. No need to hoard. Because at some point you've got to trust that all is well and that everything that you need is coming to you and the reason that's the case is because you're in alignment with you you are connected to your inner being and you know you just know that you're in a state of creation you're always creating the next thing is this notion of being a survivor I would suggest that you completely take that word out of your vocabulary. It's such a low bar concept. You are so much greater than surviving. It's really time, ladies and gentlemen and children of the world, it is really time to choose to be a thriver. And you have to understand what that means for you and the best way to understand what that means to you is to go back to the beginning of this video and to really start to step into your true north and you can do that through journaling you can do that through meditation you can do that through prayer you can do that through just sitting quiet and and shutting off your mind and, and disconnecting from all the chatter on digital and social media and the news and just really going within, going inside your heart, going inside your solar plexus, connecting the dots between your head and your heart and really having a true dialogue with you. So those are my thoughts and this is Deborah Peters. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. I appreciate you subscribing and hit the bell so that next time I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. Have a blessed day. Love you.